السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا وقائدنا وقرة عيوننا سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين Today insha'Allah we will talk about one of the unique pearls of Islam One of the mothers of the believers The fourth wife of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Hafsa bint Umar radiyallahu anhuma So before we talk about her, we we, ha- we know that her father is one of the elite of people, one of the very well-known person, one of the very well-known lineage in uh, the um, Arab world. And who of us would not know Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab? Sayyidina Umar is the father of Hafsa radiyallahu anha. And she is to be known as the generous, the daughter of the generous, the noble, the, the daughter of the noble. And Umm al-Mu'mineen Aisha radiyallahu anha uh, took her as a very special uh, friend and they were two special friends that there is no secret to be kept uh, uh, from each other. And she w- uh, Sayyida Aisha would always uh, praise her. She knows how uh, how good she is, a, uh, a good person she is. And uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knew how special this woman is. Al-Hafiz Abu Nu'aym al-Asbahani radiyallahu an, rahimahullah, may Allah have mercy on him, he said, when he talked about her, that she was As-Sawwama, Al-Qawwama, Waritha Al-Sahifa Al-Jami'a Lil-Kitab. She was the one who is always fasting, the one who is so, uh, um, uh, so, so much doing the Qiyam layl and these two characteristics of her are of the best and of the most of her remarkable merits that we will see in her character. So if we, if we talk about those who were uh, the pioneers of getting to Islam, Hafsa was one of them. And she was raised, and the love of Islam was raised with her. So since she she was uh, very young, she knew what Islam means. So she, she saw her father declaring his Islam amongst everyone, when no one could declare his Islam. And she, she saw her uh, uncles, her uh, marital uh, uncles, the uh, sons of Zaun, um, how they were the leaders amongst the companions, how they uh, embraced Islam. She saw how her parental uh, uncle, Zayd ibn al-Khattab, was one of the uh, Muslim knights 
in the school of prophethood. And she saw how her aunt, Fatima bint al-Khattab, and her husband, Saeed ibn Zayd, she saw how all those people were guided by the light of prophecy. How they were guided by the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going on the straight path. <laughs> so Hafsa radiallahu anha grew up and she was at the time that, that she was eligible for marriage. So one of the noble uh, uh, young men of Bani Sahim proposed for her. His name was Khunis ibn Hudafat al-Sahmi, and he was one of the pioneers who embraced Islam also. And he, he, he announced and he pronounced the shahada at the hands of Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu So Hafsa was married to uh, Khunais radiallahu anhuma and Umar radiallahu anhu was very happy with this blessed uh, marriage. He was very happy that he has got a very good husband for his daughter. But we all know that the non-believers in Mecca started to uh, started to show the Muslims the most torture because uh, they embraced Islam and they changed the religion of their forefathers. So Quraysh was trying to torture the Muslimin and uh, uh, they were opposing the uh, call for Islam as much as they could. And that's why it was the first migration to Habasha, to Abyssinia. And Khunais and his wife were of the very be, uh, first people who migrated to Habasha. So <clears throat> they ran away and they were saved from the torture of Quraysh. But it was not so long that Khunais got so much longing for Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he was remembering Mecca, the best city. And he was remembering the Kaaba. And these memories would come to him morning and night. So until he was not able to, to stay in Abyssinia anymore. So he took his wife and went back to Mecca. And of course, later, because of, again, the torture of Quraysh to the Muslims, the uh, permission was to migrate to Medina, to the blessed city of al Medina al Munawwara. And later on, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also migrated to Medina. And there in Medina, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made the brethrenship. And the uh, brother of Khunais was Abu Abs ibn Jabrin al Ansari. So Khunais and Abu Abs were so happy with this brothership. And they were both. Uh, two strong knights to fight for uh, the army of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Khunais with this was considered one of the uh, companions who migrated to both Abyssin and to al Medina. So in uh, Medina, Hafsa and her husband were uh, learning more and more about Islam. 
And Hafsa radiallahu anha, she was so smart. She loved to, to learn more and more. She loved knowledge. She loved, she loved to, to be uh, uh, very knowledgeable. So she, she started to memorize whatever Quran would be revealed to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She started to understand the meanings. She started to understand the lessons out of the ayahs. Her husband, Khunais, was always watching the uh, movements of the uh, non-believers, and he was getting himself to, to fight them. Until it was the second year of Hijrah, and Quraysh decided to fight the Muslims. And uh, we all know the, the reasons for the Badr battle that the uh, uh, Quraysh wanted to uh, save their caravan the, of trading. So uh, uh, Khalid ibn al-Wali just got the, the way to save the, the caravan and the non-believers did not want to stop until Abu Jahl said, Wallahi la narji'u hatta narida Badra. We, well, he swore that they will not go back until they get to Badr, uh, to, the, the, to the place called Badr. So he wanted to stay there for three nights. So they would slaughter uh, the camels and they would feed people and they would drink wine and all the Arabs would know about them fighting uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and so everyone would fear them. But what happened? Of course, uh, the battle started and amongst the army the, uh, who participated in that battle was Khunais ibn Hudhafa. And there was also six of the, the relatives of Hafsa radiallahu anha. They also participated in that battle. Her father, Omar ibn al-Khattab, her uncle, parental uncle, Zayd ibn al-Khattab, her ma uh, maternal uncles, Uthman wa Abdullah wa Qudam ibn Maz'oon, her cousin. And so everyone participated. So, so those six people participated. And of her cousins were Asai ibn Uthman ibn Maz'oon. So seven people uh, six people with her husband uh, participated in the Battle of Badr. And during the battle, Khunais was aggravating the non-believers with the way he was fighting. He was a strong knight. Uh, he was killing right and left. He was so, so uh, brave. And Khunais would see the uh, courage of uh, the other Muslims who were fighting, so he would he would go more and he would fight more until the uh, arrows and the swords of the non-believers got him in so many places, in so many spots of his of his uh, body. So. When the non-believers uh, ran away at the end, the uh, war ended, and the uh, messenger, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, stayed three nights in Badr uh, and until the Muslims got back their, uh, 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 their hymn again, and Khunais, at that time, he was bleeding. So his, his wounds uh, uh, just stopped bleeding. And Hafsa was very happy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the army victory, that he gave Sayyidina Muhammad sallam victory against the non-believers. And she was... Uh, of, uh, she was very good in uh, uh, treating the wounds of her husband. But a few days later, 
uh, <clears throat> uh, his uh, wounds got worse again and her husband passed away. So he, his, uh, his death was so striking to Hafsa radiallahu anha. When Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knew that Khunais uh, died, he was a murderer, he ordered that he is to be buried in al baqiyah Jannatul al baqiyah yeah, next to uh, next to his um, uh, uh, to, to his wife's uncle of Mad ibn the uh, the uncle of Hafsa radiyallahu anha. So Hafsa was very sad for the death of her husband. It was just only a few years of marriage and she lost her husband. And of course, Hafsa was a, a very good, strong, pious uh, uh, woman. And she accepted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, with uh, Allah's decree that she lost her husband. So what did she do? She got into a deeper relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more. She would uh, uh, continue worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the day and during the night. She would continue praying and connecting it with fasting, hoping uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make things better for her. She was only 18 years old when she was a widow. So if we stop for a second here, we understand that during, war, during hardship, we get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more. And we say, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Oh Allah. So this is what we, uh, what we do, we just worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We just remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more. So this is why we say, know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the time of prosperity. He will be with you during the time of adversity. When we are relaxing, we have to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when we, when we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are getting some sustenance for our soul. So when we have calamities, our soul can endure that. And this is what happened with Hafsa radiallahu anha. She was a very good pious worshiper and she got more into that state when she uh, was in need for Allah's help. So Hafsa radiallahu anha was doing her idda, and it was a few months that, uh, um, uh, four months and 10 days until she, she got over with her idda. Her father, the, the smart Umar radiallahu anha, he would look at her eyes and he would see how clever that uh, woman was. And he would see also the sadness in her eyes. But he would feel happy when he see her getting connected more and more to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asking about uh, his companions and uh, he, he knew that uh, uh, Hafsa, the daughter of Allah radiallahu an, lost her husband and uh, he must have mentioned to Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu an, that he is waiting for the right time to propose to 
get uh, to propose to Hafsa, so she would be his wife. Of course, Sayyidina Abu Bakr an, was the secret keeper of Sayyidina Muhammad So he would keep that in his heart and he would not mention it. So it happened later on, Umar ibn al-Khattab an, her father, the father of Hafsa, he wanted to make his daughter happy. So he wanted to find her a good husband. So Sayyidina Umar radiallahu uh, an went to Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu an. And at that time, Sayyidina Uthman was so saddened by the death of his wife, Ruqiya, the daughter of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was so saddened by that. So Umar radiallahu an noticed that and he got the idea. Why wouldn't he ask Uthman radiallahu an that to, to, to marry his daughter? So he went to him and he, knowing that Hafsa, his daughter, is not the same as Ruqiyah, the daughter of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But he wanted to try. And he got to him and he said to him, Ya Uthman, in shi'ta an kahtu kabnati hafsa. If you want, I would, I, would, uh, yani, uh, I would ask you to get my, if you want, um, you, you can marry my daughter hafsa. Uthman radiallahu anhu was surprised with these words, but he said to Umar radiallahu an, a very clear cut, okay, I would look into this. So Umar, a few days later, he did not get any response, response from Uthman. An. So he met him again and he reminded him to get married to his daughter Hafsa. But Uthman, an, he uh, rejected that offer. And he said, I don't want to get married. Omar radiallahu anhu was so sad and he did not expect that. So he, he was a little يعني, upset with uh, Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu anhu. How would, he, how would he reject marrying his daughter? Knowing her, how how a good, noble, uh, uh, pious uh, uh, woman she was. Umar was thinking for a few days, who is to marry his daughter? So he met Abu Bakr Siddiq and he knows how good a friend to him he was. So he said to him, Ya Abu Bakr, in she does a wish to Kahafsa bin Umar. So if you, uh, oh Abu Bakr, if you want, I would uh, get you to marry Hafsa. Abu Bakr radiallahu an was silent. He was silent. And Umar radiallahu an was upset with Sayyidina Abu Bakr more than his upset with Sayyidina Uthman. And he was so uh, surprised, why would they refuse getting married to, say, uh, to, to his daughter? So Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an did not stop there and he wanted to uh, uh, go to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to tell him what he, um, how his two best friends reacted when he offered that they would marry his daughter. So he went to the best of the, of the creatures and he said to him, Ya Rasulullah, this is what happened. So Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu smiled and he said, يَتَزَوَّجُ حَفْصَ مَنْ هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِنْ عُثْمَانٌ Hafsa will be married with someone who is better than Uthman. وَيَتَزَوَّجُ عُثْمَان مَنْ هِيَ خَيْرٌ مِنْ حَفْصَ and Uthman would get married to someone who is better than Hafsa. The 
few days passed and uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam announced that Uthman radiallahu anhu would, would get married to his daughter Umm Kulthum after to the death of her sister. So the idea illuminated in Sayyidina Omar's head. What's going on? It's really right what Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu said. Um Kulthum is better than Hafsa, but who is better than Uthman? And he was so happy to think, is it possible that Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu is going to get married to Hafsa, his daughter? So he, he, he got the answer and Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam proposed to Hafsa and he got married to her. And she was, she was blessed with an honor and she became one of the pearls of Islam. She became one of the mothers of the believers and that made Umar radiallahu I'm very happy with this best marriage. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose and his choice is always the best. Again, let's stop for a second here. Sometimes we, we choose something and we want that something to happen. And we make lots of dua. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we beg him, Ya Allah, we want this, Ya Allah, we facilitate this, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. But when it happens, we say, we, we realize that it wasn't the best choice, that we were mistaken. And we would wish that this thing did not happen. This is why we make the dua. Allahumma inna la nuhsinu al-ikhtiyara fakhtar lana. Ya Allah, we don't know how to choose. We don't know what's best. We don't know what's khair for us. We don't know what's shar for us. So we ask you to choose for us. We don't know how to, to, uh, to manage our affairs. So we want you, Ya Allah, to manage our affairs. وَرَضِّنَا And make us content with whatever you decree, de decree for us. So we have to have 100% dependence on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to know that when we want something and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does something else, the khair would be in that thing. And this is what happened to Hafsa radiallahu anha. So Sayyidina Abu Bakr met Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an, and he apologized and he said, Ya Umar, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned to me that he is going to propose for Hafsa and I would have never ever exposed his, his secret. But if he did not marry her, of course I would have married her. So it was the blessed, uh, the blessed marriage to Hafsa radiallahu anha. Of course, before Hafsa, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after the death of Kharij, Khadija radiallahu anha, he was married to Sauda, and then he was married to Aisha radiallahu anha. So Hafsa, uh, Sayyidina Umar, was always advising Hafsa was always advising his daughter that she would not compete with Aisha radiallahu anha. Because he knows how Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved Aisha. And he know how he loved her father. So he said to her, Aina anti min Aisha wa aina abuki min abiha. Who, who are you to compare yourself to Aisha? And who is your father in comparison to her father? So Hafsa got the message and uh, she was uh, very 
a very good friend with Aisha radiallahu anha. Of course, Hafsa knew that she was not on the level of Aisha radiallahu anha in knowledge. No, and he know, she knows that Aisha radiallahu anha got to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam before her. He knows, she knows that uh, uh, she has, uh, that Aisha was so clever, so knowledgeable, and she uh, always remembered the uh, advice of her father. And she was always with Aisha radiallahu anha, and they were the best friends amongst the wives of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But a few years later, uh, there were more wives for Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and jealousy started to get into the heart uh, of Hafsa. Well, humans, human beings. So, once uh, uh, Umar radiallahu anh, was uh, talking with his wife, and he was arguing with her and she was uh, answering him back and she was not accepting what he's saying. And, and, and she uh, was arguing in most of the issues that he was talking about. And then he was so angry. And he said to her, you are not supposed to talk back to me. She said, oh, okay, but... Uh, I'm not the only one who talks back to her husband. There is someone who is better than me and who is talking back to someone who is, who is better than you. And that is Hafsa, your daughter. And Sayyidina uh, uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would be angry the whole day because of the talking back of his wife. So Umar, radiallahu an could not accept that he took his uh, his uh, uh, clock uh, clock and he went back to immediately rushing to uh, uh, his daughter and one of the issues that that happened one of the things that uh, uh, Hafsa was uh, arguing with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam she said to him uh, that um, she, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يدخل النار إن شاء الله من أصحاب الشجرة أحد الذين بايعوا تحتها. None of the people who got the pledge under the tree would get into the into a hellfire. Hafsa radiallahu alayhi wa said, يا رسول الله, yes, they will. So he looked at her and he said, what are you saying? What are you saying? So Hafsa said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah to Maryam, wa in minkum illa wariduha. Each and every one of you would see the hellfire, would, would, would pass by the hellfire. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, yes, that's right. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, ثُمَّ نُنَجِّي الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا وَنَذَرُوا الظَّالِمِينَ فِي هَاجِثِيَّةً Then Allah will save those who, who were, who had taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those who were uh, non-believers, they will stay forever in, in Jahannam, in hellfire. So when uh, Umar radiallahu anh went directly to his, uh, to his daughter, he asked her, would you talk back to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he, that he would be angry all day? She said, yes, we all, we all, his wife, we all uh, talk back to him. And he asked him, would any and each one of you, any one of you, would she leave him? during the day until the night? And she said, yes, Ya Rasulullah. And Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anh, he said to his daughter, Hafsa, I'm warning you of, of a, a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm warning you that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would get angry with you. And then he said, 
He said something very special. Wallahi laqad alimtu anna Rasulallahi la yuhibbuki wa lawla ana latallakaki. I swear that Sayyidina Muhammad does not love you and if had it not been for my sake, he would have divorced you. So Hafsa calmed down and she accepted the uh, advice of her father and she was always obedient, happy and a uh, very good wife to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if we stop here for a second, now, with today's marriages, if the, the parents knew that their daughter is not uh, happy at the, at the house of their husband, they would do their best to get them divorced. They would try to, to end that marriage. But what did Sayyidina Umar do? This is a lesson to all the parents. You have to give the best advice to your daughter. Don't get your daughter to get divorced for silly reasons. Try to keep the marriages strong. Try to keep the bond of the, uh, of the daughters with their husbands strong. So Hafsa radiallahu anha was uh, so good to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after that. Until one day, Sayyidina Hatib ibn Abi Balta'a came back from his uh, 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 trip to uh, Egypt. He was with a mission going there and the governor, the Christian governor of Alexandria uh, sent so many gifts to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And among these gifts, there were two slave women, but they were very special to the governor. So he sent them as uh, a gift to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And these, uh, uh, these were Maria and her sister Sirin the daughters of Shamoun. And Maria was uh, known as Mary the Copt, Maria Qutiyah. And uh, during, uh, along the way, when Hatib was going back to Medina, to the Medina, uh, he uh, talked to Maria about Islam. And he, he was wishing that she would become a Muslim. And he talked a lot about all aspects of Islam until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, gave her yani, the uh, uh, light and she accepted Islam and she became a Muslim. And her, uh, along the way also, her sister, Sirin, became a Muslim also. So in Medina, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took Maria as uh, a wife of the slave. And she was uh, in a house, uh, in the house of Haritha ibn Nu'man al-Ansari, very close to the uh, mosque of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is very close to the houses of the wives of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So uh, we know that, we mentioned that Hafsa radiallahu anha and Aisha were the best uh, friends that there is no secrets again, uh, from each other. So each one of them was talking to the other about her worries from this Coptic, very beautiful slave woman that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to spend a lot of time with her. And one day, Hafsa radiallahu anha asked Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for a permission to visit her parents, to visit her father, and she left. Maria came and uh, she entered the house of Hafsa and she stayed a few, uh, a few days with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Hafsa came back, she saw Maria in her house, she did not get in. 
And she was she waited until Maria went out. And when she came in, she was she she went to see the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and jealousy was so high with her and she was crying and she said, Ya Rasulullah, you did something bad to me. It's my house, it's my bed, and you 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 you, you made it so hard on me. How how would you do that to me? So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw that uh, jealousy and uh, he wanted to calm his wife and he didn't want her to talk to talk about it. So he said, how about if I, 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 I don't get again with her with the condition that you do not mention it? And she said, okay. But the jealousy did not leave Hafsa. And she went to her best friend, Aisha, and she talked and she, she mentioned what happened. And she said, uh, Rasulullah, the, uh, he, he made it haram on him to, to be again with Maria. And of course, it didn't stop there. So the, uh, uh, the news were spreading amongst the wives of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was revealed to by Jibreel Alaihi Salam that Hafsa did not keep his secret. So uh, knowing what happened, that the wives also talked about it. So Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had an oath that he would uh, he would not meet with his wives for a whole month. See, the Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went up to a room uh, and uh, his uh, servant Rabah was at the door of the room and he was away from his wives for one whole month. The the, the wives of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were uh, so sad that they realized what they did, and especially Hafsa, that she exposed the secret of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The people also, the Muslims or the, the companions, thought that Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam divorced all his wives. That's why he is not getting with them for, the, for, for a whole month. So Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an, yeah, he went and um, he wanted to get into the room and uh, he asked Rabah to get in and to get permission from Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Sayyidina Umar did not, uh, was not given the permission and he uh asked for permission again and again but the uh he did not get that permission until umar radiallahu said uh, said it in a loud voice ya rabah istadhin li in ala indaka ala rasulillah fa inni awunnu anna rasulullah dhanna anni qad ji'tu min ajli hafsa so sayyid muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was listening to him that he, he did not come for Hafsa. Wallahi la in amarani Rasulullah bi darbi unuqiha la adribanna unuqiha if he, uh, if Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would uh, order me to go, to, uh, to slaughter her, I will. So uh, Rabah sallallahu uh, alayhi gave the permission uh, which was given to him from Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Omar radiallahu alayhi can get in. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came and uh, he, he saw Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, uh, yani in a very uh, uh, zuhd, in a very uh, state, in a state that he, there, the only thing that was in the room was just a uh, uh, thick uh, uh, carpet and nothing else except some some barely the, uh, that was in the room and uh, just uh, 
some uh, camel uh, uh, thing that was camel uh, uh, leather that was in the room and he cried and Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said my Kikai Omar why are you crying and Sayyidina Omar said ya Rasulullah Kisra wa Qaisar the kings of Roman uh, uh, Persia, they are in the best state of, uh, uh, if they have everything, and you, Ya Rasulullah, you are in this room. And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, أَمَا تَرْضَى أَن تَكُونَ لَهُمُ الدُّنْيَا وَلَنَا الْآخِرَةِ Won't you accept that the dunya, this life is for them, and we will be enjoying the day after, the life after? So this is another lesson for us. It's okay to, to, uh, to have some wealth, but we have to be careful. This wealth should be in, in our pocket and never in our hearts. We, we want to, when, when we have the money to give the poor, we want to, to do charity, we, don't, we want to, to help others, but not to enjoy this thing that is vanishing. No one is taking anything of his wealth into the grave. We are leaving everything behind. So Sayyidina Umar uh, started now talking about the issue of, the, of his wives and he, uh, he asked him, Ya Rasulullah, did you divorce your wives? And he said, no. So Sayyidina Umar was very happy and he said, oh, can I rush to the, to the Muslims outside? They are waiting so that I would tell them that you did not divorce them. And Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, gave him the permission for that. So uh, Umar وسلم, gave the good, good news to the companions and he, he talked to his wife and she was so happy to, uh, to his daughter, I mean, and she was so happy to hear that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the ayahs of Surah Al-Tahreem. Ya ayyuha al-nabiyu, liba tuharrimu ma ahalla Allahu laka tabtaghi mardata azwajika wallahu ghafoorun rahim. And so on until he said, Asa rabbuhu in talaqahu kunna ayyubjilahu azwajan khayran minkun. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to uh, uh, to divorce uh, you, he will, uh, he, uh, if, if uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam divorced you, uh, all the wives, then he would, uh, he would substitute for him wives better than you. Submitting to Allah, believing, devouting, obedient. Uh, repentant, worshipping. So he, all the wives uh, uh, repented and uh, they were very uh, uh, obedient to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now if we want to briefly mention uh, about uh, Hafsa radiallahu anha, we would say she was a very pious woman uh, fasting during the day, doing lots of Qiyamul Layl, and uh, Jibreel alayhi salam came to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said to him, إِنَّهَا صَوَّامَةٌ قَوَّامَةٌ وَهِيَ زَوْجَتُكَ فِي الْجَنَّةِ She's a, fast, uh, a woman uh, who fasts during the day, she's a woman who, 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 who prays during the night, and she is your wife in, in heaven. So Hafsa, from the very beginning, since she was young, she was uh, known to be very smart. And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi saw that and he encouraged her to learn. He encouraged her to read. He encouraged her to learn how to read, how to write. And he asked Ashifa Radiallahu Anha to teach her. And he also, she also, uh, one day, one day, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam came came back to to Hafsa radiallahu anha in her house, and she uh, she she saw a Shifa radiallahu anha. She was with her, and he said to her, "Alimiha ruqya tanamla kama alamtiha al kitaba." So teach her how to cure people from the certain type of sickness. To the same way that you taught her how to write. 
So this is another lesson. You women, you should seek knowledge. Do not stop. اطلب العلم من البهت إلى اللحت. Try your best to keep learning until the very end. But the more we learn, the more we realize that we know nothing. The knowledge of all people on earth compared to the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is as if a bird gets into the ocean, gets a drop of water and drinks it. So this is the comparison. The more we learn, the more we, are, we realize that there is a lot that we have to learn. So keep learning. Hafsa radiallahu anha was one of the uh, best people in fiqh. And uh, everyone would go back to check with her and Umar radiallahu anha would go back to her to ask her about some of the women's uh, issues in fiqh the, uh, 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 about the period and that stuff so it was she was one of the best uh, people knowledgeable people uh, if, if she was also uh, uh, a pioneer in that field. She was also a pioneer in literature. She was she was very eloquent in her speeches, and we saw so many times when she talked, she would say a lot. Hafsa radiallahu anha got uh, the best merit that she was entitled to the collection of the Holy Quran. When the Quran was written, was, uh, was collected at the Rashidi era, it was kept with her, so she was a regard of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, this was one of her best uh, uh, merits, that she was a memorizer, uh, of the Quran, and uh, she was someone who knows the meanings of the Quran, and she was the one who kept the Quran written uh, until it was the time of Uthman radiallahu anha, an, that he got that uh, one uh, um, one Quran from her, and then the Quran was copied. So uh, another thing that she was, she was also, in addition to being so connected to the Quran, she was one of the people who narrated uh, so many hadith of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She narrated 60 of the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so many men narrated on the authority of uh, uh, Hafsa radiallahu anha. So, uh, so many things still to talk about, but uh, we'll end with uh, what uh, during, uh, during the uh, Rashidi era, it was the time that, um, Everyone would uh, would talk highly about Sayyida Hafsa radiallahu anha. Everyone respected her. Everyone knew how knowledgeable she was. Everyone knew her status. Everyone knew her position, and everyone respected her. So when it was the uh, 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 the time. The 45th year after Hijra, she felt uh, weak, and a few days later, she passed away. She was 60 years old when she passed away. Uh, SubhanAllah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite us with her. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite us all under the banner of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
And until next time, I leave you with a special salam, with special greetings to our beloved Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.